um, webinar. I want to talk to everybody today about the upcoming release of GroupWise ASCOT and update you on the very recently released uh, update for Novell Data Synchronizer Mobility Pack. Uh, we did a presentation just recently for the, ed and the education group, and so we'll be reviewing that. In addition, we'll be giving a demonstration today of several of the features in the upcoming release of ASCOT and give you an update on the schedule and where we're at on delivering that. As many of you know, GroupWise ASCOT is in authorized beta. We entered authorized beta in early June. Uh, we've updated that uh, those beta customers with uh, over three times now with new code and with new functionality and bug fixes as they've reported issues and as they have given us feedback on user experience and branding and some of the uh, new features that we have created for this release. We are still on schedule to release in early Q4. Uh, that is the public uh, uh, messaging that we've been giving is early Q4. Uh, we expect we'll be um, pretty close to around brain share time. If you're coming there, you'll definitely be able to see the very final versions of ASCOT that are coming out. In ASCOT, uh, in a high level, we are, we are providing you additional information sharing, some changes in platform support. Um, for example, NetWare is not one of the platforms that will be supported in ASCOT. However, there are new platforms that will be supported, including OES and uh, uh, SLES versions. We have added new calendaring capabilities, which we'll demonstrate today. We continue to increase our integrations with Vibe. We have a brand new web access client and new features in architecture that we'll explain and talk about today on web access. And we have created a web version uh, or a web set of templates specifically for the iPad. Um, and so we'll demo that today as well. In addition to ASCOT that is in authorized beta and coming up for release in early Q4, we are announcing uh, two, new, two more releases along the roadmap for GroupWise. The next release is called Cardiff, and it is uh, mostly a web-focused release. It will add support for Android and Playbook tablets, and will also add web-based instant messaging. Um, we'll also be adding some features around social business and social threading. Uh, and that, like I said, will all be a web um, client and web-based release. So there won't be new agents or other things there in that particular release. And then in uh, late 2012 or early 2013, we will be releasing Windermere. And Windermere is 64-bit. Uh, it will be um, heavily focused on web administration. Uh, Console 1 will no longer be supported. We'll do a lot with social business and Vibe integrations and then we'll continue to um, provide more full set of features in both web access and continue to add support to the Windows client. Um, on the bottom of that slide, you'll also see a roadmap for Data Synchronizer. If you have not heard, uh, Novell Data Synchronizer released on August 5th, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, its latest public version. It's version 1.2. Novell Data Synchronizer for Mobility Pack 1.2, and it adds uh, lots of great things, but two very specific things. It now provides you HTML support for all of your iOS devices. And in addition, it also increases the scalability of your servers. You can now scale each of the mobility servers to 500 users. Um, so very significant in, uh, increased capability and feature set in in uh, Delaware. The next release there is codenamed ENU, and uh, it will be concentrated specifically on TAS, uh, TAS support and support for iOS 5 that will be coming out. And then you see a couple of other releases there, codenames for those, Fox and Galice, and those are all also coming in 2012 and 2013. The mobility pack is on a fairly aggressive release schedule. It is in a iterative or agile development model, and so they do release very often on that, usually every six to eight weeks. 
they either have uh, new features or bug fixes out on that particular product and the uptake on those have been uh, fairly robust from both our support and our customer base of, of downloading and installing and putting into production those data synchronizer drops. Um, and that kind of takes it to the end of our of the slideshow part of this presentation is just kind of give you an idea of the roadmap. What I want to do now is uh, jump right into uh, the demo portion of the presentation and we're going to be demoing uh, three different pieces of the ASCOT release. The first one we will demo uh, several features in the new web access. Uh, next we will demo a few features in the new Windows client and finally we will um, we will try and demo to you uh, some of the new features in the iPad templates. So let me bring that uh, forward for you. You get a look at my daughter there for a minute. <clears throat> this is uh, this is GroupWise ASCOT. This is running against uh, production servers within the Novell uh, infrastructure and data center. We have several post offices. I think we're up to nine post offices internally that have been updated to ASCOT and been rolled out into production. That represents several thousand users uh, within the company that are already running ASCOT. In addition, uh, our beta sites have been very active and have participated with us even more aggressively than than uh, we had requested and several of our beta customers have rolled out ASCOT post offices into production. So we're very, feeling very comfortable about the stability and reliability of ASCOT, the quality that is there, the things that run right out the gate, um, and uh, the, the um, capability and value that you'll find in, in the ASCOT release. The first thing that I want to show you here is recurring appointments. Recurring appointments is a new feature for uh, ASCOT and for the web access uh, interface. When you bring up a new appointment, uh, you'll see that you, very easily that you can name complete like you have in the past. And I'll just name complete a couple of people here real quickly. And uh, and then I'll show you the uh, recurrence pattern here that is new for, for web access. Here you have a very simple UI that allows you to create um, daily, weekly, um, or monthly appointments uh, very easily. They're just a few clicks. Uh, no longer do you have the big, uh, well, at least in web access you didn't have this at all, but you don't have the large calendar that you have to multi-select uh, several different days. You can select patterns very easily uh, and be able to see exactly what you'll be doing when those, when those particular date range begin, how many occurrences that you want to have, how many times you want it to repeat. And that uh, user interface allows you to create occurrence, recurring appointments for week, month, uh, or daily um, types of things. In addition, um, busy search has also changed for web access. When you go to the busy search tab, you'll now see a very graphical representation of the busy calendars that you have um, set in your distribution list and allows you to see very easily when available times are. And as you select those particular times or if you mouse over those times, you see I've selected a time here where both Dave Wilkes and Rick Fowler are busy so they get crossed out. If I select a time here, you see that uh, just about everyone is busy, no one's available. But when I select here, everyone is available, no one is crossed out, and so there's an available time that I can create an appointment. So it's very easy to use. You can see very easily and mouse over what appointments are there. It's very easy to change a particular appointment or to scroll forward <clears throat> in the week or month, um, and you can scroll forward indefinitely. That's not uh, like in the Windows client where you have um, a set number of days that you're busy searching, you can see uh, uh, interact with this calendar very easily and see exactly where you'll have a free time open or when someone is busy. You can also select over here and just see when particular people are busy by selecting or 
toggling those particular users and their calendar highlights and shows um, kind of bolds and give them a special color to let you know where in the graphical user interface that that particular user is um, busy. Let me check real quick. Uh, I guess I can't see that. Alrighty, so that is busy search as well as recurring appointments inside to our web access. Um, also, one of the most requested features that we've had in web access is the ability to sort uh, the particular columns here in the regular view. So it's very easy. You just click on the column header and you're able to sort very quickly um, by date or subject or size. Uh, you can see very quickly that uh, I'm sorting my entire mailbox, which has uh, several hundred items in it, and it's very easy to be able to, to now sort columns inside, um, inside Web Access. And that's available on, on essentially any of the, on essentially any of your folders. You can go in and sort those, um, and, <clears throat> and very easily uh, get to the data that you're looking for. One of the other features that we added in Web Access was to consolidate and migrate all of the signatures between the Windows client and the Web Access client. So now in the Web Access client, you have both HTML signatures as well as multiple signature support, and they are the exact same signatures as the ones that are in the Windows client. So if you make changes to one or uh, you update the settings in one client, they will be reflected uh, exactly the same way in the other client, both in Windows and Web Access. And that's also true if you're using the Linux and Mac clients. All right, the next thing that I want to show you very quickly in Web Access is the support for uh, pictures in the address book. And new to uh, the GroupWise Ascot release, is the ability to see um, pictures and to be able to uh, get access to photo data that you have imported or have synchronized with your personal address books. Uh, we are not supporting pictures yet in the system address book. That is still something that is coming. That's not uh, supported in the Windows client yet either. But uh, if you have imported or used pictures in your personal book in the Windows client, you'll be able to see those inside of web access. In addition, you can easily um, add a picture. As you click to change the photo, it allows you to upload a file and uh, any photo that, that you want to associate with this particular contact. And the last thing that I want to show you in web access uh, is just really uh, easily being able to modify and create groups. I can select a, a set of people click on the group button, and it automatically adds um, all of those recipients to my group management dialog. I can easily bring up the address selector, add additional, uh, add additional people to that really easily. Um, I can easily modify the uh, entries. So the group management, um, creating groups, managing groups is all new for GroupWise Ascot. And um, those are the features that I wanted to share with you today on Web Access. Let me check, real back, check back real quickly and see if there are any questions on, uh, on the monitor. Let me see where that is. Do I, do I see those questions, Q? Um, you should be able to. I don't see any that came through. There was one that was sent directly to me, and it was just, uh, let's see if I can find it here. Um, it just says, regarding the social business for the 2012 beta release, um, do you mean Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, et cetera? What, what, uh, what we do mean by that in the, in the Cardiff release is that we are going to try and uh, bring in some of the social feeds that, you're, uh, that many of our consumers and users are using in other places. And yes, it does have to do with Twitter and Facebook. And what you see in a lot of those other applications is how they thread and group conversations. Um, back and forth email replies and that type of stuff is grouped slightly different in those social um, places. And so that will be the first step that we do is introduce kind of that 
th that conversation threading model. In addition, what we want to allow you to be able to do is participate in those social networks without having to, to leave GroupWise so that your social feeds come directly into GroupWise and that you can post to those social feeds directly from GroupWise. So those are, the, uh, those are some of the social business things that we'll be doing. Perfect. Let's see. Uh, it looks like they're... Okay. Uh, well, there, oh, okay, here's another one that came through. Will there be a new Mac client? It's a great question. There will not be a new Mac client for GroupWise uh, ASCOT. Uh, there are no changes planned for the Mac or Linux client in uh, the GroupWise ASCOT timeframe. Uh, we, we, our strategy has been to provide full functionality in the web client um, to satisfy our Mac and Linux users. The GroupWise 8 Linux and Mac client will continue to be supported in ASCOT. Uh, however, there will not be a new client that will be distributed with um, or that will be um, available as part of GroupWise ASCOT. Okay, perfect. And you'll probably answer these couple more as you go into it, but while they're here, I'll just ask, ask them. It says, uh, first time hearing about ASCOT, is this only for web access or are these features, i.e. busy search auto date, to be available via the GroupWise client as well? Excellent question, and I will be demoing uh, the the Windows client next um, and several features there, and you'll see uh, several of those capabilities uh, reflected as well in the Windows client. And then in some cases, the Web Access client is leading the way, um, and we'll kind of demonstrate those as well. But I will be showing the Windows client and some of the new features in there. And today, because we only have a short period of time, I'm not able to show you all of the new features of ASCOT, but I'm trying to highlight some of the most uh, requested ones or the ones that uh, people have wondered most about. Perfect. And then we'll get to the rest of them um, as we get a little further on. Just one last one is, uh, is ASCOT 64-bit. ASCOT is not 64-bit, neither on the agents or in the client. However, just like in GroupWise 8, you can run them on and install them into 64-bit architectures both 64-bit uh, hardware as well as 64-bit OSs are supported and they can be installed there, but they are still 32-bit applications. We will be going to 64-bit on the agent side in Windermere. Um, we were most of the way there, but we didn't feel like uh, uh, we had had enough QA time to validate that, but we will be going there in Windermere. All of our agents, POA, MTA, GUIA, um, will all be 64-bit, available in 64-bit when we get to Windermere, which is the, the, the release after, the first major release after ASCOT. Okay, perfect. And then uh, we'll leave the other questions. I think that they'll probably be answered as you go through, and if not, we'll hit on the other questions at, uh, towards the end. All right. Thank you, Q. The next section, as you see there, I have my Windows mailbox up, and I'm showing that now. You see my uh, Conan the Barbarian. Uh, Fandango email that I've received. What we want to show first here is the new uh, recurrence UI that you saw in Web Access is also available in uh, the Windows client. So as I bring up a new appointment and I choose the uh, recurrence button, I have the daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly um, options like I do in Web Access. And we also have the custom um, option, which is basically the uh, previous UI that allows you to select multiple days and we'll show each of those. For example, here in daily, um, you're able to select um, the daily pattern that you want to have if it goes every other day or if it's every weekday. And in um, slightly different from web access, you do get these mini calendars here at the bottom that highlight and tell you exactly which days will be affected. And so as I add occurrences here, you see that uh, they are highlighting down in this area. So it's very easy to tell if you're getting uh, the days that you expect in your recurrence. You can go weekly um, every Monday, Wednesday, and uh, Friday, and you can see that's reflected down here and how many occurrences that you get there um, of what that will mean. And you can obviously uh, scroll forward and tell how, how, how far that's going to go. 
on the monthly ones as well, same type of thing. The difference here is if I do and go and add several occurrences, you, you see here that I'm actually skipping ahead and only showing those um, first, first day of each month, and you see that as I go through uh, those different months there. So it's very easy to tell if your recurrence is you're getting exactly what you want. And then the uh, and then obviously yearly, which is probably used mostly for birthdays and other types of anniversary things. Um, the last one here is the custom dialog, which brings you back to the multiple select dialog that you're used to. If you just want to select days that don't quite fit a pattern um, and you can select random days, then that uh, dialog is still available to you along with the formulas and the examples. Um, that were uh, previously available, but now just slightly more hidden, such that uh, we have a new user interface that people um, can be provided. The next feature that we want to uh, demonstrate for you in the in the Windows client is we want to show you the changes that we've made to multi-user calendar. Multi-user calendar. Um, uh, it has been requested that when you create multiple users uh, from a proxy and uh, you're managing someone else's calendar that you treat them a lot like we do personalized shared calendars. And so what we've done here is we have added uh, the ability when you choose the multi-user calendar that you can go in of course and you get your same dialogues as you've had in the past and you're able to see side by side um, here's Jay's calendar and here's Dean's calendar but what you also get here on the side is that those calendars show up in your folder tree and you're able to, be, to turn those, uh, toggle those particular things on and off. You can assign a color to them just like you did with the personal calendars. And even greater than that, uh, what you can now do is you can view those in the regular day, week, and month uh, views. So you no longer have to watch them side by side uh, although that's still an option, you can now go and overlay uh, people's calendar on top of each other in a week or a day or a month view. And of course, the colors represent what person that is uh, whose data is that you're viewing. In addition to that, what you see is now I can create as many multi-user calendars as I want and that I can make them as deep as I want and have um, I guess trees of trees, multi-user calendars of multi-user calendars that allows me to use those check boxes to display and um, hide the data that I am most interested in. So here in this particular case, as I have Jay Parker, I can easily toggle his on and off and my calendar will update and his, uh, his data will be removed and I'll just be seeing my data there. Um, so the multi-user calendar is new from that standpoint. You get to be, be available. You get the ability to view multi-user data, uh, both in day, week, and month types of views. And your administrative assistants and those who manage other people's calendars will be able to create as many of those as you want. I also uh, regularly use a resource calendar where I proxy several resources and schedule conference rooms. And it's really nice to be able to hit that uh, particular calendar and toggle on and off what rooms are available at a particular time of the week. Um, so multi-user calendar is new. The next thing that I want to uh, demonstrate for you is the changes that we've made to modify an appointment. I have an appointment here that I've scheduled. And when I go to resend that, um, what we're really doing under the covers is no longer a resend that requires end users to reaccept or to um, view the changes that have that that you have made, but allows you to modify the appointment, add recipients, delete recipients, add attachments, update uh, the message body or the subject or even the place, and resend that, and only on occasion. For some instances, will that be required to be reaccepted by the recipients? So the first example or use case is if I go in and add a new user, for example, Alex Evans, everyone else on the distribution list um, will not be required to reaccept that. Alex will get a new appointment, not a delegated one, but a new appointment, 
and um, he will be the only one that will be required to, to accept the new appointment. Everyone else who receives the appointment, simply their distribution list will be updated. I can also go in and add an attachment. So if I've created an appointment, especially a recurring appointment, and I want to go back later, and I want to add an agenda um, or add another a file attachment to that appointment, it's very easy to go and add that after the fact without forcing everyone to re-accept that appointment. Now there will be an indicator that the appointment has changed and uh, they will be, uh, when they look at their calendar for the week or for the day, they will notice any, any appointments that have uh, been modified um, out beneath them, but they will not get a new um, message in their mailbox telling them that they need to re-accept the appointment. Now there are a couple of uses, use cases where they will be required to re-accept. If you do change the date and time or the place, uh, that will be, require the user to re-accept those. We felt that uh, those were significant enough changes that if uh, the date or time or the place changed, uh, that they needed to be notified and have to re-accept those particular date, times, and place moves. So before in GroupWise 8, we introduced the ability to modify recipients. Now you can modify every aspect of the appointment, from recipients to subject, uh, date, time, location, uh, attachments, message body, the entire works. Also, there is one other thing to, to de demonstrate here for you. There's also another option here, resend copy. And we have found that several of our users will send an appointment and then they'll use that appointment as a template to schedule other additional appointments. And so the resend copy allows you to um, send another appointment based on the exact same data. And this one is essentially scheduling a brand new appointment, not modifying the original. And so those uh, capabilities and stuff are new for GroupWise ASCOP. The last feature that I want to demonstrate today for you is the share, the, share a folder. Uh, share a folder, share a tree. And this particular feature is uh, been requested for a long time, and so we want to show it to you just real quickly. It's the ability when you have a tree of folders to be able to share that, in, that entire tree. So when I go in and I try and share this particular folder, I, I now have the ability, and it's, uh, it is checked by default, to share all subfolders. So when I hit OK on that and that message goes out, you will see that the original folder was shared and all of its subfolders were shared. And now all of the people who received that received a single uh, notification of a folder share. They won't receive a notification for every subfolder, but they'll receive a single share, but they will be shared that entire folder tree. So now you can share an entire folder tree simply by sharing a single folder. And from then on, those are treated as a single entity. So if you want to go and change the rights to that, um, to that share or you want to add additional people to that, whatever that is that you want to go and do, that affects not only that folder but the entire folder tree and all of those will be the same. Um, if you do try and change one of the uh, subfolders, you will get a, a, a message that says to modify the sharing rights of this folder, modify the sharing rights of the parent folder HR info. So you're be unable to change anything in here um, without going to the parent folder and sharing that. You can drag and drop out of this, that breaks the sharing. Um, you can drag folders into the folder tree which will automatically inherit the sharing uh, and the rights and the recipients, all of that will be automatic if you drag and drop into or out of that folder tree. This is backward compatible. So if you do have clients or users who uh, you share with a GroupWise ASCOT client and they are on a previous version of the Windows client, um, it will still be, uh, it is backward compatible, so all those shares will be 
uh, created and sh shared to those clients as well. Um, so now uh, this new feature, you can share an entire folder tree as easily as you share a folder. All right, those are all of the features that I have time to share with you today on Web Access, I mean on the Windows client. And I just have one more uh, demo to show you, which is the uh, iPad templates. But before we get to the iPad templates uh, queue, I'll ask you again, are there other questions or are there questions that we should field on the Windows client? Yeah, let, let me go through a few of them here. Um, let's see. All right. Okay, what will happen to the release of GroupWise 8.02 HP3? Is it still to be released before ASCOT? It is. It is imminent. Uh, GroupWise 802 Hot Patch 3 uh, will probably be released, um, if not tomorrow, early next week. Um, it is in its very final stages of validation um, and going through operations at this time. So we do have all the fixes. I've actually written uh, my blog uh, to announce that. So it is imminent. It will happen in the next uh, day or early next week. Okay, what about document management? Are there any changes there? Unfortunately, for the GroupWise ASCOT release, there are no changes for the document management area of the product. Okay, um, and then will there be AED integration or will you still be required to use Console 1? In uh, GroupWise ASCOT, you will still be required to use Console 1. However, in uh, the Windermere release, um, we will be extending our directory support to not only include eDirectory like we do today, but we will also extend it to support Active Directory. And our entire administration model will change. It will move to a web-based administration model and Console 1 uh, will be retired and it will no longer be the console that we will use to manage group-wise. That is coming in Windermere. However, development and uh, um, engineering has already begun on that, and we will be demoing extensively and sharing extensively our plans and uh, things at BrainShare in October. So if you do want to learn more about how the administration stuff will work in Windermere and see what we're doing there and our support of Active Directory, come to BrainShare. Uh, that will be a significant topic of, of, of a couple of the sessions as well as our uh, uh, the keynotes there. Great. Then there was one question about Web Access. Um, with Web Access, are there plans for Notify? Uh, great question. Uh, we don't have plans for Notify in GroupWise ASCOT. Uh, Notify is one of those things that continues to come up um, to be added to uh, GroupWise Web Access. However, it's it's not currently on one of our our roadmaps, but you know we'll we'll continue to keep that keep that under consideration. Um, it is one that people ask about from time to time. Uh, you'll just have to see if it if it meets the uh, cutoff. The main things that I think that we will spend our time on in the next uh, release around Web Access. Uh, we'll have to do with offline capability, um, being able to have a quick viewer, uh, being able to add the home folder, being able to do task management, uh, some of those kind of uh, um, features w that will make it more full-featured. Notify, uh, definitely one that we'll consider. Of course, web IM, web instant messaging will also be integrated and be available there on the web. So there are a few things that are happening uh, with regards to web access in the post ASCOT timeframe. Okay, uh, let's see. What about changing the owner of shared folders? Um, sorry, that is still not a, a feature that we have completed. Um, I'm sure that's re requested for a couple of different reasons. One, when people uh, leave the company, uh, that you want to uh, adjust ownership of shared folders and shared resources. Uh, that isn't something that we've implemented yet, but it is on our list. Okay. And then let's see. Will it, will it be possible to use Vibe through Access Manager and GroupWise Client at the same time? Um, I'm not sure I understand that particular question, but I think the, the uh, answer is yes. 
Um, if you're talking about um, getting access through things like iChain or Access Manager, there is integrations, for example, with, um, in fact, I can show you that uh, real quickly and probably should. There is integrations with Vibe. As you see in my folder tree to the left, I have all of my Vibe uh, folders here listed. Um, that integration has been turned on. And from my GroupWise, this is my GroupWise Windows client. I have integrations turned on with Novell Vibe and all of my Vibe content is being displayed and accessed directly from GroupWise. I can drag and drop content from GroupWise to Vibe and it will automatically appear there. I can also search, and I'll, I'll do that real quickly as well, I can also search um, in GroupWise and have it also search Novell Vibe or Novell Teaming. And here's a perfect example I think with GroupWise as uh, I should have several hits of that in my calendar. The first section is my uh, mailbox. The next section is the Vibe search. And it gave me uh, lots of different hits there in Vibe on um, hitting GroupWise there. I have documents, I have emails, all sorts of things where, where that occurs. And when I open one of those items up, you see that that content is extracted directly from Vibe. It does not exist in GroupWise but we are uh, marshalling that data and federating it directly into the UI for, for GroupWise. So now you can integrate GroupWise and Vibe and not have to leave your Habitat or your GroupWise clients to get access to all of that data, both from a search capability as well as from a folder, folder tree or access point and drag and drop capability. So Vibe and and GroupWise continue to come closer and closer together. The other area that we will add uh, in the search capability is to add instant message, message histories and store those in GroupWise so that when you search, you'll also get hits on any of your instant messaging chats or history um, inside your search uh, request for inside of GroupWise. So great question, Q. Anything else? Uh, let's see. Uh, let's do a couple more, and then we'll uh, then we'll let you get on, and we'll finish the rest at the end. Uh, if you add a subfolder to the tree, do they receive access to the new folder? Yes, they do. So if you drag a tree or, or drag a folder into the subfolder share, or if you add a new folder there, the uh, the all of the people who you've shared that with to the parent, and all the rights that you've given to that parent will be inherited to that folder and it will automatically be shared out to that that group of people. Okay, perfect. Um, the rest of the questions we'll get to um, uh, towards the end, depending on our time. So, uh, All right, so great. Ahead, the, last, uh, the last thing that I want to share about today is uh, the new iPad templates. Um, as you already know, the iPad is fully supported and has been since uh, September of last year through our DataSync uh, solution, our data sync mobility solution. That solution is a active sync um, data synchronization solution, meaning you use the native mail, calendar, and contacts applications that come on the iPad and we synchronize group-wise data to the iPad and they're displayed in those applications. What we're introducing here today and that will be part of ASCOT is the ability to go to the Safari browser on the iPad, navigate to a particular web access URL, and access your data without having to roll out a mobility server or have an account on a mobility server. Um, and they will get direct access to that, to their GroupWise data. The data is not synchronized to the device. It doesn't take up any space on the device. It is just being displayed in the Safari browser um, on the device. So here you have, I'm running this in some in a semi-emulator, I'm running it in the Safari browser, and this is what the iPad template looks like. You have your messages here on the left, you can obviously scroll those up and down. Uh, I'm of course giving a mouse gesture, but this would be a finger gesture on the iPad. I can click on those particular items, um, I can easily uh, access uh, the data there, I can create new messages, 
new mail and appointments and schedule those. I do have some form of uh, name completion here that allows me to um, select users and address those things from the iPad. Uh, you will get, um, I can't demonstrate it here, but you will get you know, the keyboard that will pop up on the iPad. Um, and you'll be able to send and get all the gestures there that, uh, that you expect on the iPad. Um, you have both mailbox capability. You also have a um, text-based calendar type of capability. So you can see your calendar data and you also have a searching capability. The contact data is basically through your name completion type of stuff. The main thing that you get is mail so far in mail and calendar data so far in the iPad web access templates. Um, so this will be available in ASCOT. It is specific to the iPad. The uh, templates are designed specifically for that. In the Cardiff release, we will expand these same templates to be supported on both Android as well as the BlackBerry Playbook devices. Um, and so those are coming. Um, you do have some <coughs> capabilities. Let's see if I can uh, demo those. You can forward and move a message. You can reply to a message. Let's see if I have one here that uh, gives me a little bit more. Um, you can see the properties of, of a message and the people who received it. Um, these are um, context sensitive uh, applications here. I have reply, reply to all and forward. So I have those types of uh, capability and functionality inside of this interface, but those will be delivered um, through the Safari browser on the iPad. And uh, that concludes uh, Q, the demonstration that I have for today. Um, I'm willing to take any other questions, uh, but I also want to talk to you a little bit about AttachMate uh, in the acquisition of Novell that has happened in the last couple of months since, since May and their continued and renewed interest in the GroupWise um, product and in the collaboration space in general. They are um, fully committed to this product. They are investing and reinvesting in the GroupWise research and development team. We are hiring more resources in the Provo, Utah area um, to help build out GroupWise. We will be committing to uh, more frequent releases of GroupWise. Um, so we expect both Cardiff and Windermere to be quick releases with a lot of great features as we add resources and we beef up the types of things that our end users and our customers want and need. So many of the requests that I heard on the phone today that I was able, that I was unfortunately telling you not yet that they're not in ASCOT. I fully expect us to embrace those and to get those out to you as quickly as we possibly can. Um, AttachMate uh, is very much interested in this space. Like I say, we're investing in it. We will have a big presence at BrainShare. We'll be demonstrating, obviously, everything, all the details about GroupWise ASCOT, but we will also be talking to you a lot about the future of the product, its roadmap, and some of the more details of what's happening there. If you would like to follow along uh, the, the GroupWise blog, something that we write a couple of times a month, um, here is the uh, web address, and maybe you can get that out to uh, your participants queue uh, uh, on that web address, but you can come and you can learn about the new features of ASCOT. We discussed them here, for example, relevant sorting, which is something that we didn't uh, demonstrate today but is discussed on the blog. Uh, you can hear about this next chapter of GroupWise and some of the um, excitement and energy that is coming from this uh, refocus on Novell and making this your Novell again. Um, so that's all available and just want to invite people to come to BrainShare and hear more details about that. So Q, what other questions do they have? Uh, there's a few here. Let me get to them. Um, thanks, Dean, for that portion as well. I know that that's something that, that everybody wants to hear and uh, um, great great information. Um, let's see. Uh, let's go back up here. Uh, any, ma any major changes done to the administration tools, uh, Console 1, iManager? 
there's not significant changes there. There are some minor changes um, with regards to some integration pieces and exposing those. There's uh, several bug fixes there, but uh, nothing of any significance. This is still console one, um, and it's it's very much like it was in GroupWise 8. All right, and then uh, any enhancements in the ability to create signatures? Yes, um, in Web Access, we have um, added a lot of capability there. We've added two major things. One, the ability to have HTML signatures, and number two, to have multiple signatures. And the other thing there that we've done in Web Access is the signatures in Web Access and the Windows client, and therefore the Linux and Mac client, are all the same signatures. So we don't store them in different places. They're not unique to one client or the other. If you change them in one place, they'll be reflected in the other clients, um, and you'll get those changes. So we do have cross the board client, uh, cross of our clients support for both HTML and plain text signatures as well as multiple signatures. Okay. Then the next question was just about um, the Windows client. Are there features in the Windows client that are not available via web access? Yes, there are. Um, right now, I guess I would estimate that the feature set of Web Access is probably 60% of the feature set in the Windows client. The major ones that uh, we are working on and we will deliver to you shortly have to do with offline or caching mode or being able to archive items. Those are the big ones. However, there are a set of other ones that are probably um, um, just as important, whether that's the quick viewer or support for the home folder. Uh, those, those are features that are not quite yet in Web Access. We did take a, a fairly significant step forward in ASCOT with regards to Web Access that will allow us to um, accelerate our adoption of features in Web Access. Uh, in particular, what we did is we removed uh, or changed the architecture. We no longer have um, Gwinter as part of the server-side architecture, Gwinter is going away in GroupWise ASCOT, and uh, Web Access talks directly to the post office over SOAP, which will allow us to implement features quicker. Uh, we did add a lot of uh, functionality in Web Access for ASCOT, and we also changed the branding fairly significantly in uh, GroupWise ASCOT in Web Access. And that branding stuff will also eventually come to the Windows client. Uh, let's see. Will ASCOT be a support pack of GroupWise 8 or a new version, like GroupWise 9? This will be a new version of that. We haven't announced the name uh, of what that will be but and, and what the version will be. Still uh, going with the code name of GroupWise ASCOT. But this is a major release of the product. Um, it is not a support pack. Um, so it does have a lot of new features, a lot of new capability, both in the clients um, and in the uh, web access, as well as a brand new platform of iPad. Um, and like I said, the, the other major thing here is that GroupWise ASCOT will not be supported on NetWare. And so uh, those of you who are still on NetWare, you'll want to uh, make sure that you're migrating to Linux or have plans to migrate to Linux and OES uh, uh, quickly so that you can run GroupWise ASCOT. Okay. Let's see. Will data sync ever sync notes? Yes, it will. In some uh, devices that support them, uh, we already do uh, do some type of notes, either reminder notes or all day events, kind of synchronized as notes. However, the met the next major focus of data sync is to support tasks, um, and that is a major. Um, um, emphasis to iOS 5 as well. So TAPS is the ne next thing on the list, uh, but you do have some support for notes today depending on the device that you have, um, uh, and a lot of the notes uh, deal with either all-day events or, or other types of things. Okay, let's see, there's a few more here. Um, any plans for multi-calendar views and web access? There are plans for that. We do expect uh, Web Access to be a full featured client and have all of the features um, that are needed to make you as productive as possible there. Uh, Multi-user calendars is not on the list for GroupWise ASCOT, but it is on our roadmap in Web Access. Like I say, Web Access will be 
and has been um, a focus of where we're going uh, longer term strategy. We would like it to have full capability and full feature set and we will get there as quickly as we can. Uh, one of the things that we are toying with to try and figure out how to do that quicker is to be able to update web access uh, multiple times in between releases uh, that do not require an update to the server, uh, simply exposing new uh, features in web access. And now that, that is now possible now that we have removed Gwinter and we're talking directly to the post office, which supports already all of these features that you want, um, like multi-user calendar. We just need to be able to expose those through uh, the web access servlet. And so we do expect that we'll come out with an idea of, of updating at least the web portion of your technology on a more regular, frequent basis, anywhere from every three to six months. Okay. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> at one time, there had been interest in your blogs about folks in open source community willing to develop Linux and Max client. Is Novell open to those folks doing further development? Um, we are open to that. Uh, there, our biggest issue there has to do with support and what are the expectations of support for that. Um, we also have issues with uh, um, some of the intellectual property rights of those and exposing our customers to some of that. Um, but we are open to that. We're willing to discuss that. Uh, but that is a discussion that hasn't necessarily got a lot of legs. So, so it's still an, out, still an open question, I guess. Okay, uh, let's see, there's a few more, and then we'll have to wrap up. Um, any changes in monitoring or group-wise health checks? Um, I'm thinking for just a minute. I don't think that there are any significant changes there besides some uh, platform support type of stuff and uh, bug fixes. I don't think that there are significant changes in either of those categories. Let's see, a uh, couple more and then, then we'll wrap up. Um, let's see, I know this is two releases away, but in the new GroupWise admin web interface, will we be able to create new e-directory users and add them to the post office like we do with C1 now, console one now? We do expect that the, uh, the feature set will be fairly identical, meaning the capabilities, obviously displayed in a new way and accessed in a different way. Um, that particular one I haven't seen in our in the plans yet, but sh surely we'll be able to answer that uh, at BrainShare. So there's my plug. Please come to BrainShare. We'll have those answers. <laughs> Perfect. Then uh, I think we'll have to finish up with this last one. Um, with the signature support across clients, does the address book autocomplete work the same way in ASCOT, i.e. not having to be customized order on each machine slash client? That that's still an outstanding issue. We have added um, relevant sorting. Um, if you will read the blog up there that I have up on the screen now, introduce relevant sorting. There is some impact on at least some of that. Right now, we sort um, across address books, and it is alphabetical. The relevant sorting adds another layer to that that allows you to bring to the to the sort things that you've used recently or frequently. Um, so if you do have a um, John Zimmerman that you send email to a lot more than a John Adams, John Zimmerman will actually come up first when you type John. Um, so that's kind of the idea of the, of the relevant sorting is that there's some significance or relevance to the sort instead of just alphabetical. Uh, and that's across name completion and uh, categories and a few other places. And so read that blog and you can get details on there. However, the uh, name completion sort order is still stored in the registry. Um, and that's not something that we've moved to uh, administrative control just yet. Although that is something that uh, if you've watched my blog, that is a, a topic that we've discussed out there and, and know that we need to make changes 